Hi guys, it's Kelly Lenavola here and I'm back again with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today we are going to be using the Butterfly Beauties and the matching die and then um, this other stamp set called Geometric. You know I love, I love, I love uh, mixing geometric shapes with flowers and, and softer images. So these butterflies are beautiful. They're um, drawn to look jeweled. So I am going to actually do some no line coloring with colored pencils. I know, I'll wait until you get yourselves back sorted in your seats since surely you fell on the ground when you heard that I was going to be doing no line coloring with colored pencils. It makes sense. I totally get it. Um, here I stamped in the ink on three fade out ink. It is a little bit darker than it would be in real life because my stamp was dirty and I didn't realize it. It's okay. It's not going to affect the overall coloring. I have my colored pencils here. And then also my sharpener, which you won't see me use on screen, but I am periodically going back in and sharpening my colored pencils just so I can get into all the little, as Kathy Rekusen likes to say, nooks and crannies. I kind of approach my colored pencils the same way that I approach my Copics, um, and that is layering is super important. Layering is much more important with um, colored pencils than it is with Copics because you can get a seamless one coat cover with Copics. You really can't with colored pencils. You have to build up that color. And the way that you get a super good blend um, is by filling up the fibers of the paper with the pigment from the colored pencils. So I fill the whole thing in with my lightest color and then I start adding shading um, where I want that to go and then continually building up on top of that. I do do I do. Now Eric, when he watches this, is going to laugh because he's going to be like, you said doo-doo. Um, <laughs> I do uh, use the same technique when um, I'm doing my Copics as well as my colored pencils, which is I start with my lightest color, work out to my darkest, from my darkest back into my lightest. Um, sometimes I do go over it a few times with my lightest color um, at the end there just to make sure everything's filled in and really nicely blended. For... This particular, you'll, I'm sure you saw when we started, there were two cards. One of them I'm going to color on screen and one of them um, is already colored. I actually did it during the 30 day coloring challenge because I knew that I wanted this to be my video for Neat and Tangled. So I was trying to get the hang of it because I hadn't really done this in a super long time. And no line coloring is very overwhelming for me. So here's a couple of tips that I picked up along the way. Now, these are not hard and fast rules. They are just things that worked for me. And as you know, I'm a big proponent of you do what works for you. So I found that um, until I got comfortable working in smaller areas was much more comfortable for me. Um, so doing a little things like these circles. Um, I did not go all the way out to the darkest color for these circles. I just went in to get enough shading that you would be able to tell that it was the same um, shading, like general shading. Um, but then the other thing that I noticed was that I did much better in working in areas that weren't directly next to each other. So when I'm doing the wings, um, I'm skipping a line in between each. And this helps to still keep the shape of the butterfly wing but so that it doesn't get so mushy right off the you know bat and I don't really know where my lines are so by establishing these first then I can go back in and fill in the other ones and it's much more comfortable for me um I was a huge when I first started trying to um, color with card pencils one of my biggest problems was I was putting too much pressure down on the paper one of the reasons that I was putting too much pressure down on the paper is because I was trying to fill it in too quickly Colored pencils are a time-consuming process, and the more you do it, the faster you get at it. Just like with my Copics, I'm probably much faster than most people just because I've done the process so many times. Um, but for colored pencils, I would just wanted it to be done. I wanted to go over it twice and be done with it. Uh, and that isn't always feasible, depending upon especially how large of an area you have. Um, so one of the ways that I could ease up on that pressure and also stop my hand from hurting so much when I was coloring was to back up my grip on the pencil. So instead of like how you see me here, it's just from practicing and I've gotten a little bit more comfortable um, where I'm about maybe a half inch from the point of the tip. If you back your hand up to giving yourself maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch from where the tip of your finger is to the tip of the pencil, 
you cannot hold it as tightly. You just can't. You can't apply as much pressure, so it forces you to have a lighter hand until you can get used to how much pressure you should be putting down. Um, I didn't realize it until I took some classes, and actually the one that I took was from um, Kit and Clowder, which I would totally recommend. They are uh, amazing classes. Uh, you do have to pay for them, but it's totally worth it. Um, but anyway, is in that class is where she taught me that my hand should not be hurting when I'm coloring with colored pencils. And that was one of the big pr reasons why I didn't want to color with colored pencils is because I would walk away and my hand would be cramping um, like I had just driven home from a snowstorm. <laughs> I live in Ohio, so it's like that's norm. Um, and um, it should not be that way. The other thing is doing the multiple layers, building up the color, not rushing the process. Um, so there's just like a handful of kind of tips that I have picked up along the way on my journey. I still prefer Copics. Um, I prefer the look of Copics to colored pencils, but I can say that there is something um, about colored pencils, the way that they blend, the how smooth that they are. Um, that there's something just really endearing about them and sometimes when you're coloring a project the look the markers just aren't going to get that look um so yeah that's that um you'll see the other butterfly that i colored i did not do no line coloring just to be clear there i did a black outline um so i stamped it just like you would any other um outline stamp and um, then I colored it with colored pencil. That's actually the one I prefer, but I love a bold black outline. Not everybody does. And it's they're two completely different looks. Same butterfly, two totally different looks. And this does look much cooler, I think, with the, the no lines. Um, it looks much more like a natural butterfly, less um, cartoonish. Um, you know, with the, with the black outline, but, you know, to each your own, every, I, every look is different and I like exploring and trying different things to see how those will work for me. And then, you know, sharing them with you guys to see if maybe those will work for you. Um, so yeah, that's that you did. You might've noticed that I've sped up the process here. Um, just because it is very long, even though I've sped up the process, it's still, you know, a 20 some minute video. Uh, so this is something that like if I'm doing it and I'm not doing it, um, on camera or for a video, I like to like sit in front of the TV while Eric and I are, you know, watching a show or watching TV or, um, you know, something like that because I can't sit still, <laughs> honestly. It's very hard for me to just sit and, and watch a movie and just sit and be still. Um, so this is a way for me to kind of do something that's not completely distracting away from whatever I'm watching and still get those things done. So speaking of doing things, um, it's been crazy around here. So um, a little scary. Uh, Last Tuesday, I had a, I started with a sore throat. And so obviously with everything going on with the coronavirus and my anxiety already sky high, like no joke, before it was just like travel anxiety and driving on the road. And now it's like, oh my gosh, worry anxiety. And so I've been doing a lot of praying and trying to give it to God um, because I realized there's nothing that I can do about it. It's the, the worry will not change anything. I, I understand that on a rational level. I just can't turn my brain off. Um, but anyway, so I had a sore throat. And um, so I called my family physician and I was like, hey, I don't have a fever. I don't have any other symptoms, but I do have a sore throat. Um, what do you, what do you think? And she was like, well, we're still seeing regular patients. Um, you know, you're more than welcome to to come in. And I was like, but do you think I need to? Because honestly, I don't really want to. <laughs> um, I just want to stay in my house, which I can't do because we're both still working. But um, anywho, so I figured out, like I doped out after a couple of days that because there's no masks to be had because they are going to um, the heroes on the front lines of this coronavirus pandemic, um, I was sanding without a mask and I didn't really because I've never done furniture finishing I mean I guess I I 
on the outskirts I knew like I should be wearing a mask, but it didn't even occur to me that that could be what the cause of my sore throat was. Um, so we've kind of slowed down on the dining room refinishing. I don't really have anything to report on that front. I was talking to my mom about it and she was like, your dad's got a slew of stuff in the garage. I think that there might be some masks in there along with um, some like steel wool and some other things. Uh, so my dad did a drive, <laughs> did a drive by, um, let me think, two or three days ago. Um, Nathan and I stood behind the glass front door and waved to him as he dropped the the box off on my um front porch um which was very nice of him but i have not gone back down and sanded eric's actually doing that right now while i do my voiceover so i'm hoping now with a mask i'll be able to get back at it and our dining room will be less of a disaster area because you know we're three chairs in two chairs left in the table so we're kind of right smack dab in the middle of it i have to tell you that um so been Skyping, like obviously I talked to my, you know, my mom and dad on the phone or, um, you know, like most people do, but she, we've been doing the Skyping so that she can see Peanut. And um, then what day was it? It was sometime, some day last week, she made uh, breakfast sausage, which I totally love. My mom's sausage is my favorite. And um, she made brownies. And so I went down there um, to pick them up from her porch and waved at her through the door and um it's such a little thing i know that like uh, see i'm starting to get a little emotional i apologize um it's such a little thing but like seeing my uh, mom and dad through this like glass door and not being able to um you know hug them or give them a kiss goodbye or you know what i would normally do um just makes me so incredibly sad and just, you know, um, I'm grown. I know that. But um, I don't think there's any point where you don't need your parents. You know, at least not my family. Um, so I just, um, I miss them. I miss my family. We are a super close family. You know that if you listen to my channel, I spend a lot of time together. We do a lot of you know, family game nights and getting together for dinner and, you know, all of those things. And um, I just, I miss them. I miss being able to spend time with them. Now, I'm not, there's some people I know who were, with the whole pandemic, they're, you know, cheating, like, hey, it's just a coffee date or it's just one play date or, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I can't, um, I can't risk uh, putting my parents you know, in that position because they're, you know, in the high risk category. So I won't do that, but I will be very, very glad when this is over and I can um, hug them again. <laughs> I will be very glad and I know I'm not the only one. Um, so Nathan and I, um, when we, when I put him to bed at night, um, we always go through, you know, the best part of the day and the worst part of the day. And, um, he likes to do a sliding scale. So a one to five, what kind of day you're having. And, um, you know, then we do what we're most grateful for, which is basically the equivalent of our prayers. Um, so talking about what we're most grateful for and, you know, thanking God for, for those things. And he's six. So sometimes it's hard for him to think kind of outside of his own little, uh, world, you know, he's thankful for animals and bunnies and, you know, the dogs and, um, you know, and, and people, mommy and daddy and Nana and Papa and all that, you know. Um, but so we have been adding certainly um, first responders and, and because of, you know, me working in the police department, first responders has always had a very specific definition for me. Um, but now with this whole thing changing, um, you know, right now our first responders are not just police, fire, EMS, you know, they're also doctors and nurses. They are, um, grocery store workers. They are truckers. They are people working in, you know, the restaurant industry who are still doing, um, you know, carry out and Ohio right now has a shelter in place order, um, so we've, you know, upgraded from the social distancing to shelter in place and I'm all for it. I'm, I'm not one of, 
Uh, I know some people are upset that they won't be able to go out for X amount of months. And I'm like, hey, if it's going to save some people's lives, let's do it. Um, and it it's not necessarily ideal, but I don't think that it's worth risking overloading our healthcare system either. Uh, and, you know, certainly not an MD. But anyway, um, if you are one of those people who is doing those things, or if you are a person like me who um, is, well, I'm still having to go to work, but if you're, you know, doing your best to, to stay at home and only going, like sending one family member to the grocery store and, you know, not making any unnecessary stops and just thank you. Thank you for doing your part in the middle of something that is, um, you know, never been seen before in in our lifetime. Um it's just crazy, totally crazy right now. Uh, so anyway, um, on a lighter note, I made a pillowcase. Um, this, the, like, let's talk about, I want you to leave, here's what I want you to leave me in the comments. This is what I want you to leave me. Um, one positive that has come out of this quarantine, shelter in place, social distancing. For me so far, I have now become a what furniture restore refinisher I've learned that skill and um uh I, I don't want to say seamstress that's what I said jokingly to my mother earlier but I'm not making anything outfits I made a pillowcase y'all okay I had a pillowcase <laughs> that Emma had chewed because you know she's the worst terrible most awful and for those of you who have asked she's not gone to training no and she won't go until after this is over um, but anyway, so she, I had a pillow that she chewed and it was like a woven fabric. Um, and like, I don't mean like a woven fabric, like a drop cloth type fabric. I mean like actual cords that were woven into each other. Um, and I wanted to recover it because she had chewed it. So before all this started, I had picked up some fabric and the front is like a white, um, with like some like a crocheted almost like damask pattern and then the back I just picked up some like creamish tan color and I was gonna do a no sew pillow because I don't really like to sew well I shouldn't say I don't like to sew I like to cross stitch but um sewing is not my forte and I don't have a sewing machine like that's just the reality of it back to the card okay so all the coloring is pretty much done at this point um I'm going to add a little bit of shading to the circle that's around like the jewel of the body and then I'm going to use a black colored pencil to outline the antennas so that they stand out and then I'm going to color the rest of it off camera because it's the same exact thing it's just on the other side um, and then the one that you'll see the um, for the other card is actually the colors are inverted so instead of being the majority of it uh, pink the majority of it is blue and the um, highlights are pink but I colored them the same way again the only difference being one is stamped in black and one of them is no line coloring so here this thing this beautiful beautiful thing um is like beading um like jewels that like come down from I don't even I love it I think it is so pretty and I even picked the music for this video like I typed in gypsy because that's what it made me think of I just think it's so stunning um it's like the butterfly is a chandelier I don't I love it I totally love it anyway um so but I was trying to get my placement right and then I'm gonna white heat emboss this I'm also going to white heat emboss the double triangle that is included in the geometric set um, onto my other background and both of the sentiments but I have something to say about the one of them so we'll come back to that anywho back to the pillow so my game plan was to do a no-sew pillow so I watched a bunch of YouTube tutorials and I was using like the heat bonder uh, stitch witchery whatever you want to talk about the iron on one so you iron it with the paper on for two seconds then you peel the paper off then you fold your paper or your fabric back over and then you hold it for like an eight count over the whole thing and it bonds um, and then you don't have to sew and I've used it multiple times I've never used this particular brand before but I've used um, the other kinds of it in fact my gas station pants uh, which if you watched me on Periscope, you know what those are, uh, which I'm wearing right now, no shame. Um, 
these have held up for six years, being washed multiple times and more and everything else. And they have it in the uh, seam of it covering up a gigantic hole. Um, and I still wear them because again, no shame in my game. Um, but anyway, so I was doing it and it really was not holding very well. In some of the areas it was holding, but in some of the areas it was not. Um, so I ended up just having to sew it. I had to sew the no sew pillow. Now at least everything was kind of laid out already and it was kind of holding them together so I didn't have to do like pins and all that jazz. Um, but so I did sew it and then I did just like a quick simple like single back stitch because um, it's just a throw pillow y'all. Um, but I did do like cross stitches on the corners just to keep them from you know just like added layer of protection. So for this card background I did uh, the two um, triangles together and then I just flipped it. So I stamped it once in Versamark um, and then flipped it so that I would have one on top and one on bottom. My butterfly is going to go in the middle so I'm not really worried about filling that space in. Um, and then you'll see when I did the sentiment I did it you can only read it one way and I'm aware of that but symmetry is important especially um, when you're doing something like this where it's such a simple background and everything will be symmetrical I couldn't have just one in one spot and not in the other so that is why I opted to stamp the sentiment twice even though I know only one is really legible okay so anyway I ended up hand sewing hand sewing hand sewing this pillowcase um, and it actually wasn't bad because it wasn't really difficult. You know, I just went around my little square and it was an envelope style pillowcase. Um, so like I flipped it back inside out, poked my little corners, shoved my pillow in there. Everything fit. It was super full and I was very excited. And then I turned it around and realized that my envelope, like where the two pieces come together, he had probably about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch gap. Eric smushed it down for me and like pulled the fabric so that it mostly stays closed but if you bump it right it pops back open. So I'm currently toying with the idea of putting a button like a loop button on there as like a decoration um, that will help keep it closed. But several people pointed out on Instagram when I shared it including my very good friend Mary Dawn who sews all the time and she was like, it's going to be facing the back of the sofa and nobody's going to see it. So why do you care? And I was like, that's a good point. But I don't know. I think when you're doing something your, yourself by hand and like you're going to tell people you made it by hand, you want it to look a certain way. Um, not perfect. I don't need perfection. But like I also don't want it to be wildly outside the norm of like, you know, my envelope doesn't close. But you know, we'll see what happens from there. I have another however many weeks we're going to be in this to figure out whether or not I'm going to add that button, right? Right. So now that the backgrounds are done, I am adding some foam tape to each one of these butterflies um, so that they'll, they will be popped up. This is the butterfly that is the no line coloring, the one that we did here um, together. I'm just going to line that up with the little gems. I mean, and tell me that doesn't look. I mean, I just love the way it looks. I think it's so super pretty and in that set there's also an additional like gem so you could make them longer um, you know like add on to the design which I love. So then on this one um, doing the same thing popping it up on foam and it has the two you know triangle designs. I don't know which one I like more I, as far as the backgrounds I don't even know that I could pick. Um, but anyway so here I'm just going to add some glitter just to the accents portion. Beware of your glitter because colored pencils have wax in them. This is going to sit on the surface and it's going to take a little while to dry. Um, just be aware of that so you're not moving your cards around right away or smearing your glitter where you don't want it to go. As if there's anywhere you don't want glitter to go, honestly. It should go on all the things. Um, but then that's really it. Those are, are both of the cards. So I hope that you learned a little something. Um, I'll be looking forward to see what your positives are about our social distancing shelter in place situation. And that's it. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I will catch you in the next video. Bye.